Hello everyone. This lecture is all about sequences and limits of sequences. We start off with sequences and then we will move to infinite series in the succeeding lectures. One question that we have to address is that given an infinite summation, does it add up to a finite number? Or does it add up to infinity? Does it converge or diverge? And if it adds up to a finite number, what is that number? Let's look at what we call a geometric series. Each term is half of the previous term. One half is one half of one. One fourth is one half of one half. One eighth is one half of one fourth. And one sixteenth is one half of eight. Now, if the terms go on forever, what do you think it adds up to? You're right. It's 2. So it turns out that it will add up to the number 2. 1 plus all of these numbers will make up a sum of 2. Now here is a related infinite summation and it is called a harmonic series. 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third plus 1 fourth plus 1 fifth plus 1 sixth and so on. What do you think? this adds up to or does it add up to a real number here is another series that we can generate out of that so out of this series we can generate one instead of plus one half it's minus one half plus one third minus one fourth plus one over five minus one over six plus one over seven and so on and so forth. Do you think this adds up to a finite number? Later, you'll find out that this adds up to the natural logarithm of 2. You probably have question why? We'll find that out in the succeeding lectures. Now, here's one more interesting summation. We have 1 plus 1 half squared plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 4 squared or it's the sum of the square of the reciprocal of our counting numbers. The reciprocal of 1 is 1 raised to the second power is 1. 1 half raised to the second power is the same as 1 over 2 squared. 1 third raised to the second power is the same as 1 over 3 squared. So it's the sum of the reciprocals or should I say the sum of the square of the reciprocals of each counting number does it add up to a finite number it turns out that the sum of these numbers is pi squared over 6 now you might probably ask what is pi doing here we thought pi has to do with circles, not with numbers. These are surprising results, isn't it? These are all examples of infinite series. But before we deal with infinite series, we first focus our attention to the concept of sequences. What is a sequence? What is a sequence? A sequence is a list of real numbers as simple as that or a more precise definition would be it is a function whose domain is the set of positive integers now let's look at some examples here's the sequence 1 over 1 1 half 1 third 1 fourth and so on or the rule that generates these numbers is a1 over n, where n is a counting number. Okay? Or we have the notation a sub n equals 1 over n. So this is the rule that generates all the terms of this sequence. 
Here is another example of a sequence. The sequence generated by n over n plus 1. Okay, the sequence generated by n over n plus 1. So what are the terms of this sequence? If n is 1, then 1 over 1 plus 1 is 1 half. The next would be 2 over 3, 3 over 4, 4 over 5, and so on, and so forth. Let's look at more examples of sequences. This time, the sequence generated by the formula a sub n equals 3 plus negative 1 raised to n. So, can you write out the first few terms of this sequence? Okay, if n is 1, then a sub 1 will be 3 plus negative 1 raised to 1 equals 3 minus 1 or 2. So, the first term will be 2. How about the second term? 3 plus negative 1 squared. That would be positive 1. 3 plus 1 gives 4. How about a sub 3? Okay, so let's try out with a sub 3. a sub 3. If n is 3, then 3 plus negative 1 raised to the third power, what will this be? 3 minus 1. And that gives us back to the first element or first term, which is 2. What happens if we continue? Notice that when we get a4, we'll end up with 4. So, and so, the values bounces back between 2, 4, 2, 4, and so on. 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4. Isn't that interesting? The question here is, are the terms getting closer to a fixed number? Or is there a limit of that sequence, of this sequence? Now, we proceed to example number 4. We'll get back to that in a while. Number 4. How about the sequence generated by a sub n equals negative 1 half raised to n? Okay, what are some of the few terms of this sequence? What will a sub 1 be? a sub 1 will be negative 1 half raised to 1, negative 1 half. a sub 2 will be negative 1 half raised to the second power, which is positive 1 fourth. What about a sub 3? a sub 3 will be negative 1 half raised to the third power, which is negative 1 eighth. And then a sub 4 will be negative 1 half raised to the fourth power, which is positive 16. So that the terms of this sequence are negative 1 half, positive 1 fourth, negative 1 eighth, positive 1 over 16, and so on, and so forth. So, alternatingly, positive as well as positive and negative. The question is, are the terms getting closer to a fixed number? Or, what is the limit of the sequence? Does the limit exist? Now, let's look at the behavior of a sequence. Okay, does it happen that if we look at the sequence and it goes very, very far out, are the terms getting closer and closer to a fixed number called the limit of that sequence? Let's look at the sequence a sub n equals 1 over n. Okay? A sub n equals 1 over n has the following terms. 1 over 1 or 1, 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, 1 fifth, and so on, up to 1 over n. Are the terms getting closer and closer to a fixed number? Look at this. If we extend this infinitely, 1 over 4, 1 over 10, 1 over 1,000, 1 over 10,000, 1 over 1 million. What can you say about 1 over 1 million? How about 1 over 1 billion? Is it getting closer and closer to a specific number? Is it getting closer and closer to a fixed number? What therefore is the limit of 1 over n as n approaches infinity? You're right. 0. These numbers 
are getting closer and closer to zero. Do they ever get equal to zero? No, but they get very, very close to zero. Like in the case of 1 over 1 billion, 1 over 1 million, those are really, really so close to zero. And so we say that the limit of 1 over n as n approaches infinity converges to zero. The limit is equal to zero. The sequence converges, sorry, this is sequence, the sequence, the sequence converges to zero. So we say that the limit, and so we say that the limit of 1 over n as n approaches infinity is equal to zero. And that the sequence converges to zero. This is an example of a convergent sequence. Let's look at another sequence. This time we have 1 half plus 2 thirds plus 3 fourths plus 4 fifths or the sequence generated by n over n plus 1. Question. Are the terms of this sequence approaching a fixed constant? 4 over 5, what comes after 4 over 5? That would be 5 over 6, okay, 10 over 11, 99 over 100, 1000 over 1001, 1 million over 1 million 1, and so on and so forth. So, are the terms of this sequence approaching a fixed constant? What do you think that number is? So, if it is approaching a constant, what do you think that number is? Yes, it is getting closer and closer to 1. In fact, you can show it algebraically by manipulating n over n plus 1. Okay? Limit of n over n plus 1 as n approaches infinity equals, okay, adding and subtracting 1 in our numerator, okay, n plus 1 minus 1 over n plus 1, we can rewrite this as, okay, taking this together, 1, okay, limit of 1 minus 1 over n plus 1 as n approaches infinity, okay, limit of 1 is 1, and what happens to this quotient? 1 over n plus 1, if this gets really, really large, 1 divided by a very large number, this, the limit of this is 0. And therefore, 1 minus 0 gives an answer of 1. So for number 2, the limit of the sequence n over n plus 1 as n approaches infinity equals 1. Now we proceed to the third example third example this is supposed to be number three number three okay number three third example how about the sequence generated by a sub n equals three plus negative one raised to n and we found out a while ago that the terms of the sequence are two four two four two four okay forever now, is this sequence approaching a fixed finite number? Does it have a limit? Does it converge? The answer is no. Okay, no. Because it's only bouncing back and forth between two numbers. 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4. So, it's not getting closer and closer to a single fixed number. And so, we say the sequence diverges. Okay, the sequence diverges. Now, let's look at another example. How about the sequence generated by 2 raised to n? Find the limit of 2 raised to n as n approaches infinity. What are the terms of this sequence? Okay, this one begins with 2 raised to 1, which is 2. 2 squared, 4. 
2 cubed 8, 2 to the 4th, 16, and so on and so forth. Question. Are they approaching a fixed number? Are they approaching a fixed number? The answer is no. So, this sequence diverges. The sequence does not approach a fixed finite number, therefore the sequence diverges. Take note that for these two examples, this is supposed to be number 4 now, number 4. The first two sequences that we dealt with converges, while the second two diverges. However, they diverge in different ways. For instance, 2 to the n here diverges to infinity, 8, 16, 32, 64, and so on and so forth. But for the second, okay, it uh, kind of bounces back and forth between two numbers, so two types of divergence. But generally, if they don't converge to a single fixed number, then, di then they diverge. Note, if you don't converge to a single fixed number, then you diverge. Okay? Now, let's proceed to the formal definition of a limit of a sequence. Let L be a number, the limit of the sequence, A sub N, is L for all epsilon greater than 0, there exists M greater than 0, such that the absolute value of A sub N minus L, which is the limit, is less than epsilon whenever N is greater than M. And we say that the sequence converges to L. That means the limit of a sequence is L. That is if you can get close, you can get as close to L as you desire within epsilon by going far enough out in the sequence. So that's the same way as saying beyond term M. Let's look at more examples. How about the limit of the quantity 5? Minus 1 over n squared as n approaches infinity. What are the terms of this sequence? So the first term will be given by 5 minus 1 over 1 squared. Second term will be 5 minus 1 over 2 squared. Third term will be 5 minus 1 over 3 squared. When simplified, this gives a, a result of 4. So a1 here is equal to 4, a sub 2 is 4 and 3 fourths, a sub 3 is 4 and 8 over 9. How about if you have 5 minus 1 over 1 million? 1 over 1 million, what will this be? This will be almost equal to 5, right? Because this quotient here, 1 over 1 million is almost negligible, very, very close to 0. And so that the difference between this number or 5 and this number is very, very close to 5. And so we can see that this has a limit of 5. Okay? This has a limit of 5. Okay, the limit of this is 5. So the values are getting closer and closer to 5. Next, we proceed to example number 2. How about the sequence generated by 5n squared over n squared plus 2? Find the limit of the quantity 5n squared over n squared plus 2 as n approaches infinity. Now, we could uh, simplify the given by dividing the numerator and denominator by n squared. 
If I divide the numerator by n squared, then I'll get 5. And if I divide the denominator term per term by n squared, then I'll end up with 1 plus 2 over n squared. Limit of 5 here is 5. Limit of 1 is 1. And what happens to this as n approaches infinity? If this gets increasingly big, then the quotient of 2 over this number is 2 almost negligible that it gets closer and closer to 0. And so that 5 over 1 plus 0 gives a quotient of 5. So for example number 2, this one is an example of a convergent sequence. Okay? It converges to 5. Same is true with example number 1, converges to 5. How about this time, sine of 1 over n? What about sine of 1 over n? So let's take a look at example number 3. So let's take a look at example number 3. How about a sub n equals sine of 1 over n? And so the terms of this sequence would be sine 1, sine of 1 half, sine of 1 third, sine of 1 fourth, and so on and so forth. So what's happening here? Take note that these numbers 1, 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, 1 fifth, 1 sixth, and so on, they are getting closer and closer to 0. And you know for a fact that sine of a very, very small number or numbers very close to 0 is near 0 also. So that the limit of sine of 1 over n as n approaches infinity is equal to 0. Once more, for a sub n equals sine of n over sine of 1 over n, the terms of the sequence are sine of 1, that's from 1 over 1, sine of 1 half, sine of 1 third, sine of 1 fourth, and so on and so forth. So what's happening here? Notice that these numbers, 1, 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, 1 fifth, 1 sixth, and so on and so forth, are getting closer and closer to 0. And that sign of very small numbers is near 0. So that the limit of sine of 1 over n as n approaches infinity equals 0. Next, how about number 4? n sine of 1 over n. This time, the product of a counting number of our positive integers and sine of 1 over n. Okay? We can rewrite this as sine of 1 over n all over 1 over n. So that limit of n sine 1 over n as n approaches infinity is equal to sine, sorry, the limit of sine of 1 over n over 1 over n as n approaches infinity. Notice that this is similar to a previous limit statement that we have dealt with in the past. If you could remember the limit of sine x over x as x approaches 0, we can transform this into this. If we let x be 1 over n. So if we let this be x, x, okay? So this is similar to the limit of sine x over x as x approaches 0. That is if x is equal to 1 over n. And if you could remember, the limit of sine x over x as x approaches 0 
is equal to 1. One technique in finding limits is to plug in large numbers to see the behavior of the sequence. Now, here is a theorem which we will be using later on. Suppose we have a very small number between uh, negative 1 to 1, let's say r. So, r is greater than negative 1 but less than 1. What do you think is the limit of that r or that number? What is the limit of that number r raised to n power as n approaches infinity? Let's say, for example, let's say r is equal to 1 half. What happens to 1 half raised to the nth power. So if r is equal to 1 half, then this generates the sequence 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, 1 sixteen, and so on and so forth. So if we extend this infinitely, what do you notice with 1 over 1 over 2 raised to n? What do you notice with these values? 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eight, 1 over 16, 1 over 32, 1 over 128. Okay? It's going to be 0. Okay? It's getting closer and closer to a value. And that fixed number is 0. Therefore, we say limit of 1 half raised to n as n approaches infinity equals 0. And that's the okay, meat of the theorem. The theorem says, theorem, the absolute value of r is less than 1, then limit of r raised to n as n approaches infinity equals 0. Now, here's another limit problem. Okay? The sequence generated by a sub n equals 1 plus 1 over n raised to n. So, let's try to identify the first few terms of this sequence. What will A1 be? A1 will be 1 plus 1 over 1 raised to 1, which is equal to 2. How about A sub 2? A sub 2 will be 1 plus 1 half raised to 1 equals. That's 1.5 and 1.5 squared this is supposed to be 2 1.5 squared is 2.25 let's proceed how about a sub 3 a sub 3 is equal to 1 plus 1 over 3 raised to the third power and this is equal to 2.37 can you recall this okay I hope you can still remember that when we dealt with the L'Hopital's rule, we worked with a limit statement similar to this. As n approaches infinity, the limit of 1 plus 1 over n raised to n as n approaches infinity. Recall that limit of 1 plus 1 over x raised to x. As x approaches infinity is equal to, can you remember? This is equal to e. Okay? This is equal to e. And look at these numbers. 2, 2.25, 2.27. They are getting closer and closer to e. Which is approximately equal to 2.71828. Okay? Or the natural number E. Okay, so this is equal to E.